welcome to this online lecture of modern physics so this is what we did and this is what he just explained that uh, there were evidences that every element is made up of small blocks which is the building block of that element which is called as atom which was termed as atom and then thomson was the first one to uh, give a structure to atom to propose an atomic model rutherford then tested that model using the gold foil experiment scattering experiment and what was uh, observed in the experiment is that the results weren't matching with the thomson's model right and therefore what was required is a new model so what we will do in this lecture is we will see this model which was proposed by rutherford himself so that uh, they can account for what was observed in scattering experiment so we will see this rutherford scattering formula and then after all it turned out that even the Ruther, uh, sorry yeah even the rutherford's model wasn't correct it needed further modification it needed further improvement and that is the lecture plan for today so let's begin so this is basically the atom as proposed by rutherford what is this purple circle that you see here what do you think it is represent it is representing nucleus so what new, what rutherford said was maybe there is a very small nucleus where all the mass almost all the mass and all the positive charge of the atom is concentrated and he called that part as the nucleus so according to that model every atom has a nucleus and in that nucleus all the positive charge of that atom and almost all the mass of the atom is concentrated and what are, what is this dashed circle that you see around that nucleus so he said that the electrons which are present in the atoms they revolve around the nucleus in circular motion so he perhaps maybe uh, took hint from a uh, solar system because at that time it was very well known that sun is at the center or as we model it the sun is sun is at the center of the solar system and all the planets revolve around that so he assumed that simple concept that there is nucleus at the center which carries almost all the mass of the atom and all, all the positive charge of the atom and all the electrons they revolve in circular orbits about that nucleus so this is the simple model that he proposed now um, naturally since these electrons which are going in circles about this nucleus they need some kind of force to keep in that orbit what is that force called as yes centripetal force so this is positively charged nucleus and this is negatively charged electron and therefore electrons are now attracted towards that nucleus and there they have speed at the same time so they move in this circles in such a way that they are escaped from that orbit due to their velocity and they fall towards the nucleus due to the attraction by same amount and the resultant is that their distance does not change uh, the distance between the nucleus and the electron does not change they keep revolving about, around the nucleus they never fall or they, they are never never able to escape so that is the critical velocity that they have these electrons have so that they are now rotating or revolving around the nucleus uh, this actually is not correct representation how many of you think that we can say that electrons revolve about the nucleus in atom that you have these electrons in the atom and then these electrons revolve around the nucleus but when you hear this word revolve what it suggests is that electrons are moving in circles about the nucleus that means at any given instance of time the statement suggests that this electron has a well defined position just like when when i say that earth is rotating about the sun that means at any given instance of time we can allocate one particular position for the earth in space right the same meaning is not correct in this case when we say electrons they don't have or when we say electrons in the atom they don't have a well defined position in atom all you can talk about there is uh, all uh, all you can talk about is their likelihood of finding uh, somewhere so they are perhaps many of you have heard the term electron cloud have you heard the term electron cloud that even for hydrogen where we have only one electron we can use the term electron cloud 
what it basically means is that particular electron as i just said that it doesn't have a well defined position in hydrogen atom it is present somewhere about the nucleus but you cannot uh, associate or localize that electron at one point in space what is what we know is what is the probability of that electron being found about the nucleus and that where we have the maximum probability is basically this pier that uh, that is shown that spherically shaped uh, orbital is is the region where the electrons are found with highest probability just keep that in mind if it is not clear hang on to that thought it will it will be clear when you study it uh, study physics in deeper maybe i'll try to explain it once again when we consider uh, the next bohr's atomic model but right now just keep in mind that this revolve it we cannot say that electrons revolve around the nucleus as we know it today rutherford actually uh, assume the same thing that they are revolving just like planets revolve around the sun but as we know today the we cannot uh, say that they actually revolve all we know is that they are present in that atom and all we can talk about is the probability of finding electron about the nucleus in that atom okay just keep in mind we, if you want you can dig deeper into this uh, fact what what do we mean by uh, atomic cloud or electron cloud uh, those who are interested can search for this term on internet and they will find so many different answers which will be basically the same thing that it suggests that electron cloud is basically likelihood of finding electron uh, around the nucleus in that atom okay rutherford atomic model was not that uh, complicated it was not that confusing it was simple it said that these electrons are moving they have velocities right enough that they go around the circles in the atoms okay so uh, let's quickly find out what will be the energy of that electron which is revolving around atom like this so what we are assuming is this simple model where we have nucleus as the center of the atom where all the positive charge and almost all the mass of the atom is concentrated and electrons are now revolving here for this case for rutherford's atomic model i am using this statement which we now know after so much uh, research in physics so much development in physics after 10 almost uh, after 100 years uh, after which this uh, model was proposed that we cannot say that that uh, electrons revolve around the nucleus here we will however use this statement and we will uh, later show that this model is also false so it's okay to make this statement as far as this model is concerned so these electrons are revolving around this positively charged nucleus and as many of you just suggested that there should be centripetal force that will keep the electrons in the orbits that will keep the electrons bound to that nucleus right so now what we want to derive is a relation for energy of the electron as it moves about the nucleus is it fine let me start with this what is z what do you think this z represent it is atomic, atomic number. number and atomic number is number of electrons or which or is same as number, number of protons in the given atom, atom when it is neutral right so we are considering neutral atom and z is atomic number that means if i have atom as suggested by rutherford's model and if this is the nucleus of that atom what is the net charge of that nucleus it is actually plus z into e where e is electronic charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb right because there are z number of protons now we know that and every proton has charge which is plus e and therefore what is the net charge on that nucleus it is plus z into e is it fine is it okay now am i correct we have this uh, nucleus which is at center with this positive charge we know that charge of electron is minus e what we want to derive is we want to derive a relation for energy of the electron as assumed by rutherford's atomic model which we now know is not correct where should i start okay before that what is total energy of the electron see we are here when i write e it means energy 
or rather total energy of electron in the atom as assumed by rutherford's atomic model okay what is e equal to uh yes so i was saying what should be e it should be kinetic energy is that all energy. there should be potential energy because whenever we consider the energy of a particle it is generally kinetic energy plus potential energy it may happen later that kinetic energy is zero or potential energy is zero let's see that so first let's start with kinetic energy of that electron how can we find out how can we find kinetic energy now what is kinetic energy in terms of mass and velocity so we somehow have to get a relation for half mv square we want m in terms of rest of the constants sorry v in terms of rest of the constants so where should i start then mass is a constant we will assume that it is a, a constant see what we want is we want velocity of the electron when we, it rotates about the nucleus according to rutherford's model in terms of rest of the constants and what are those constants mass of electron charge of electron epsilon 0 permittivity of free space in terms of that we want v now exactly what we need here is very good uh, samarth so what we know is this electron is revolving around the, about that positive positive nucleus so what we know is that this electron should experience centripetal force so that it can revolve about the orbit and therefore it should have centripetal force which is mv square by r where r is the distance between the nucleus and the electron v is its speed and m is mass of electron just keep that in mind which should be equal to now what is this force the force is there because of the electrostatic uh, attraction this is positively charged nucleus this is negatively charged electron and therefore this electrostatic attraction between them is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space charge on the nucleus which is z into e into electronic charge on the electron which is also e so this will become z e square divided by r square so this is the centripetal force this is where do we get that equation that relation coulomb's law and from that we know that this should be correct for the electron which is revolving about the nucleus according to rutherford's atomic model okay so now i can rearrange these terms this r and r will get cancelled and half mv square i'll divide that relation by 1 by 2 so half mv square is equal to now 1 by 8 epsilon 0 z e square by r so we have relation for kinetic energy which is 1 by 8 epsilon 0 z e square by sorry this is square r is everyone with me on this have you got it so let's continue from this point onwards so what we want now is to get this total energy what we want is potential energy potential energy yes for if we have two charges then potential energy between electrostatic potential energy between the two charges is given by this relation q1 q2 by r here therefore potential energy for this case is going to be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 ze is charge on the electron which is this capital q then charge of electron is minus e and therefore this is e square and we have a negative sign divided by r where r is the radius of the orbit of that electron and this way we get the potential energy now actually at that day also i was asking this question which didn't i don't think reached you uh, what you can see is that potential energy is negative and mathematically it is clear that why it is negative it is because when we consider this product q1 into q2 q1 is z into e which is positive but q2 which is electronic charge is negative and therefore we are getting that negative sign for potential energy but physically what do the, what does that mean why or uh, whenever let me rephrase my questions whenever we have a particle 
bound to another system when we have a bound particle in a system potential energy of that particle is always negative why is it so what does that negative sign suggest there it is because of this i'll quickly explain it on this slide and then i'll erase it suppose don't worry about this title right now i'm just using this slide to do my work suppose i have a particle in this suppose we have the nucleus z e and the electron is bound to it now what i want to do is i want to take this electron at a at very large distance say at infinity away from this nucleus anyway so i was saying that suppose i have this nucleus which is and then electron is revolving around about that nucleus as proposed by rutherford and what i want to do is i want to take this electron away from the nucleus at distance infinity and when i do it that electron should not have any kinetic energy so should it should not be moving and if i have to do it what i have to do i have to add energy here to the system am i right because since they are attracting each other now if i want to take this electron away from the nucleus i have to uh, apply some external force or i have so that that force now can do work on this electron and you can take that electron at infinity so basically what i am doing is i am adding some positive energy to the electron to take it away at infinite distance and i am saying that when it is at that distance the electron is not moving at all so its kinetic energy is zero at infinity now kinetic energy is zero potential energy is zero because we are considering infinite distance if we look at this equation if we consider r to be infinity potential energy is going to be infinity so kinetic energy is zero potential energy is zero therefore total energy is equal to zero so we are adding some positive energy taking it at infinity and then the electron has total energy equal to zero what does that suggest that it should have initial energy as negative number right so this is one way of course what uh, two of uh, you just said is exactly same uh, that since the forces are opposite when we calculate when we use that relation integration force this minus of uh, so if i use this relation that it is minus f dx then that turns out to be negative or as uh, someone just said that uh, we are moving that particle from infinity to that point and the work done by the force which is binding it is positive and potential energy is then defined as negative of that work done and therefore it is negative so all these are possible answers so this is the total uh, potential energy now can we write the kinetic energy sorry total energy for the electron what is it going to be total energy now is going to be equal to it is going to be kinetic energy plus potential energy give me a minute yes what is it it is minus of z e square upon r right so this is total energy of the electron uh, uh, when it is present in the atom according to rutherford's atomic model right can let me ask you this question according to the model which is given why it will be when we discuss atomic spectra it will be more clear that why i am raising this question right away so we if we believe that rutherford's atomic model is correct then what is distant distance at which electron can be present or what can be the total energy of the electron is there any uh, restriction of what value that total energy can have in the atom in any atom suppose i consider oxygen atom for that that matter because we all breathe in we need that let's consider oxygen atom and let me ask you this question that i want one of the electrons in that uh, uh, in that oxygen atom according to rutherford's model which has energy which is equal to 4.1 electron volt is everyone familiar with this unit of energy electron volt if i have to write what is it it is 4.1 into 10 to the or 4.1 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules right so if i ask you this that i want electron to have this much of energy in oxygen atom is it possible whenever a particle is bound then the energy is always negative the reason i just tried to explain 
So total energy is what? Total energy is 4.1 minus 4.1 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. And this is equal to minus 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r. Sorry, this is e square. So what will happen? This will get cancelled. I can rearrange this equation and I can get r. Right? So me, what I can say is if the electron has to have this much energy, 4 point, minus 4.1 electron volt, then it can be present at this distance from the nucleus and it can have that energy. What I am trying to tell you is this. There is no energy, there is no, uh, there is no restriction on what can be the energy of the electron when it is present in Rutherford's atomic model. There is no such uh, restriction on energy of electron. So randomly you tell me any real number E and I can get a relation for R and so that the electron can have that energy. Is my point clear now? According to Rutherford's model, in any atom, that energy is possible. According to the model, I am repeating myself because that is not correct. After experimentation, we found out that actually that is not true. Electrons can have only certain values of energy. And this was a, a drawback for uh, Rutherford's atomic model. Is my point clear now? I'll, I'll once again repeat my statement. Okay. There is no restriction on what energy the electron can have according to Rutherford's atomic model. It can have any random value, any random real number as energy of the electron when it is present in Rutherford's atomic model. That's all. Just keep this in mind because when we come to discussion of uh, drawbacks, we have to use this fact. Then, of course, before we discuss uh, the drawbacks of the model, let's first discuss how it was correct as far as the scattering experiment is considered. This n theta, this is a formula. If you look at Beiser's book, the reference book that we are using uh, for this course, then we, you will see that uh, in the Beiser's book, in the appendix of this chapter, this formula is derived. Okay, what is this formula? Let's, let's quickly explain to you. Suppose this is this setup is clear to have, what is this setup? This, this diagram that uh, you see. So suppose alpha particles are emitted, they are scattered by this gold foil. And then suppose you place your screen here, which is at an angle theta from the, uh, from the di direction where they would go if there wasn't any scattering. So this is angle at which these electrons are scattered. This is, let's call it as scattering angle. So what is this theta? It is the scattering angle. Now what is this formula? This formula gives us number of electrons, this n theta on left hand side, n theta is number of electrons that would hit, that would, that would scatter at an angle theta. Okay, the, so this equation gives us the number of electrons which are scattered by, at an, by an angle of theta, right? Now, in this, let's consider every term. What is Ni? Ni is total number of alpha particles scattered, right? Suppose you expose this gold foil or you let this uh, uh, alpha emitter emit, say, uh, uh, a 10,000 number of alpha particles. Out of them, suppose 100 of them are scattered from here then this Ni is that total number. So how many total number of alpha particle were actually scattered by the gold foil? That is that Ni. This N is number of atoms in gold foil per unit volume. So in one volume, one unit of volume, how many atoms are there in this foil, in the gold foil from where they are scattered? This T is thickness of this gold foil. Okay. Z, what is Z? Atomic number of gold, right? So E is electronic charge. 8 pi epsilon 0 is constant. R is this radius at which you are placing this, uh, the distance between the screen and the gold foil, the point from where these particles are scattered. And that is the reason why R is 
to be constant at no no matter what at what angle you are observing that alpha alpha particle and therefore it has to be constant that's why you observe this circular track around which about which the screen can be moved kinetic energy is the energy of the alpha particles which where there were ways to find out and this dependence theta comes from this 1 by sin raised to 4 theta by 2 is it fine is this formula clear to everyone so this is the formula which can be derived by uh, considering rutherford's atomic model suppose you consider this atomic model that there is a center central nucleus with positive charge and then alpha particles are emitted when they come what will happen is if they are they are traveling from uh, closer to this nucleus if the line of travel or the path along which they are traveling if that line of approach is close to this nucleus naturally since alpha particles are positive and nucleus is positive there will be more repulsive force experienced by the alpha particle and therefore they will be deviated strongly and if so the point is whenever the alpha particle approaches from a line line of approach which is closer to the nucleus the deviation angle of scattering will go on increasing and that's why it was observed or it could be explained that why some of the alpha particles are scattered at large angle suppose some of the alpha particles uh, collide head on with that nucleus so they directly uh, are trying to approach that nucleus so those alpha particles who are approaching the nucleus directly they will be completely reversed in the direction and that's why they could observe the back scattering even at 180 degrees and same is the reason why they could uh, observe the back scattering at some another angle which is back scattering however though it is not completely reverse in direction there is this back scattering where the alpha particles are emitted so this or in this way rutherford's atomic model could uh, explain the rutherford scattering experiment and even so whatever their whatever the theoretical calculations that you can make from this rutherford's model at least for this uh, scattering uh, formula and the observed uh, experiment scattering in the observed experiment they match so their theory and the model at least uh, theory and the experiment at least match in this aspect of the Uh, consideration so if we consider this particular formula then rutherford's atomic model could explain the scattering formula how would you check suppose you were the one so had derived kasa karaycha te tumhala derivation tithe disel you can consider the forces and then by considering how much force is acting you can derive this formula which you don't have to study we officially it is not in our syllabus it won't be there in the exam but those who are interested can read the derivation there which is in the Uh, book in the chapter that i have shared with you you will find the derivation so that this, this derivation you can derive it theoretically but suppose you want to check so you somehow if you are a scientist a theoretical physicist who have derived this formula that if this is the structure of the atom if this is how the atoms are then this is how sh what should be the number uh, number of atoms coming at angle theta so if suppose you derive this uh, formula before we discuss uh, before we move on um suppose i we increase theta from 0 to higher values so zero angle basically means that it is not deviated at all if i go on increasing that theta from 0 at what value of theta we will start getting n as a negative number uh, is it 2 pi or it is is it pi it has to be pi because pi is 180 degrees pi radian is 180 degrees and now we are we have sin theta by 2 here so when pi is greater than uh, sorry theta is greater than pi radians and less than 2 pi then what will happen is this sin it will be sin of pi by 2 am i correct where sin of pi by 2 is equal to 1 so as this theta as you go on increasing this this theta what will happen is this theta will go on what will happen to n theta as we increase theta from 0 theta will go on decreasing Decrease. as we increase theta from 0 this n theta will go on decreasing because we have in the denominator we have sin four, sin raised to 4 theta by 2 so it will go on decreasing till we have angle which is equal to pi radian 
after which we are not worried about because once you have this uh, half circle or this uh, uh, n theta for this upper part of of the observation in the diagram you, it is going to be symmetrical for the lower half circle also so therefore this will go on decreasing this n theta will go on decreasing so number of uh, deviated alpha particles will go on decreasing as you increase th theta from 0 to 180 degrees so that is the formula that is what the formula is telling us so how would you experimentally verify this formula so you have derived the formula i was saying that you are a theoretical physicist who has derived this formula and now you want to check it experimentally whether because it is necessary whatever we propose mathematically logically is very correct as well as far as it is not experimentally verified you don't accept it as as a uh, physics theory so in this case suppose you want to accept it as a uh, this formula to be correct how would you check that experimentally you have derived the formula and now you want to check it experimentally we have the screen so we have to first uh, keep it at zero angle right we have to keep it at zero angle and then say we observe total 10 to the power 4 number of alpha particles so do ha jo n i a hai it is 10 to the power 4 okay and then we find out at this zero angle how many particles are reaching at zero angle then we have to change the screen to a new angle say 0.1 degrees again i have to uh, let alpha particle in alpha emitter these many number of particles so that they they are scattered from the gold foil and then we have to note how many of particles are coming at this new angle which is 0.1 degrees right and in this way how you how far you have to go shevard's angle kutla asel in this way we have 180 degrees and now as you, many of you have correctly guessed that as theta goes on increasing this n theta will go on decreasing because we have sine raised to 4 theta by 2 and in this range of 0 degrees to 180 degrees sin theta continuously goes on increasing and therefore n theta will go on decreasing this is one way right but it is not economical so there is a way out however what i'll do is if i was the experimentist uh, experimentalist who had to check this what i would do is this i would draw this graph and now i, I haven't even touched the experimental setup yet i have just plotted this graph and now what i i will do is i'll randomly choose any angle say theta will measure what is n theta and then that i will plot that point in the same graph where i have this curve this purple line that you see is actually the right hand side with variable th with theta variable and you can see that it is varying from 0 to 180 degrees is it fine that why we have no point at on this curve so what i'll do is i'll plot this graph and then i'll place this screen at any random angle theta and then i'll find out or experimentally uh, count the number of alpha particle coming at that particular angle for this total number of alpha particle when they are scattered from the gold foil so to number ithe milal and in this way i can choose say random 100 different angles i don't have to consider all the angles now and as far as these points they are around this graph and if they lie like this about the curve then i can say that well it seems that experimentally also the formula is correct am i right so as far as the scattering angle is considered rutherford's atomic model could explain it so this was one good thing and in fact that is the reason that is how he must have uh, proposed the model he must have derived this scattering formula and then depending on this scattering formula he must have thought that what could be the structure of atom so that we will get this formula and therefore he came up with this answer that most of them were undeviated that means the nucleus should be very small but once in a while that small nucleus since has all the positive charge electrons will be scattered scattered or if it is very close it, the alpha particle will be uh, back scattered so in this way he uh, proposed a model which was uh, accounting for the experiment for the scattering experiment but we know that it is not correct the for the rutherford atom rutherford's atomic model is not correct 
as far as scattering formula and the model is considered the scattering formula theoretically as per the rutherford's atomic model and experimentally they match so this was a good sign for rutherford and he must have been um, a believer of the model but there were suggestions that uh, the model cannot be correct so let's quickly go through these corrections suppose i have this nucleus and the electron now we are saying is revolving so this motion is it a motion with constant velocity or is it accelerated motion so the speed of the electron is constant is assumed to be the constant its direction is continuously changing and therefore what we have is accelerated charged particle and since we have accelerated charged particle whenever we have accelerated charged particle whether it is increasing or decreasing in situations like this where the velocity the speed the magnitude is constant but the direction is changing so no matter which of these situations we have as far as we have an accelerated charged particle it always radiates so it it will emit electromagnetic waves we can derive it by using electromagnetic theory and here what we have is electron which is revolving which is accelerated and therefore this atom will start emitting radiations right and therefore experimentally one thing for one thing you should be able to observe those radiations and these radiations weren't uh, observed at all so this is the first drawback then what else since this radiations are emitted some of the energy will be carried out by the radiations some of the energy kinetic energy of that electron will be carried uh, uh, will be carried by the electromagnetic radiations and because of that it will lose its kinetic energy as it loses its kinetic energy its velocity will decrease and as its velocity decreases its radius will go on decreasing and this process will continue this electron will follow a spiral path and in the end it will fall into the nucleus so we don't have a stable nucleus in that case neither these observations neither these radiations were observed nor we have atoms which are unstable atoms if we have hydrogen atom and if we don't do anything to that externally it will stay there forever right so this was the first drawback there was basic uh, error in the assumption which was known at that time also according to electromagnetic theory of maxwell the accelerating electron should emit radiations and these radiations weren't observed first second the electron will eventually fall into the nucleus which is not uh, which will which will give us unstable atom which is also not correct then second thing is this it was experimentally observed at that time by uh, spectrum by observing spectrum or spectra of different atoms it was evident that atoms or electrons in the atoms don't have any random energy it can they cannot have any Uh, arbitrary value summarize what we have done give me uh, in a minute we will uh, summarize it so we saw rutherford's atomic model which is a nucleus with all the mass and all the positive charge and then electron revolves around that nucleus this nucleus and nucleus is very small as compared to atom so atom is 10 to the power 5 times more in size as compared to the nucleus but these atoms now can have any arbitrary value of the energy of the electron which which was experimentally refuted this claim was uh, experimentally re refuted but this formula actually gave the correct scattering formula this model correctly gave the scattering formula but there were these two drawbacks first one that it will be radiating atom and no radiations were observed then it will be become an unstable atom second thing and then the energy which was there can be arbitrarily anything which is not correct atoms can only have certain values of discrete energies and therefore this model could not be explain, explained experimentally 